I know you can do this, but how'd you like to learn this? It may not seem immediately obvious why you should learn how to ride backwards on your bike, and it might feel like a bit of a trick versus a skill that you need to have, but learning how to roll backwards, even just a little bit on your bike, is gonna make a huge difference for you. This comes in handy a lot more often than you would think. Welcome to the backwards riding tutorial, also known as fakie till you make it. The most common way you're gonna use this in your riding is actually gonna come down to the track stand. When you're track standing, you're gonna be moving forward and backward on the bike to keep the bike centered underneath you. If you can't roll backwards, if you're not comfortable doing this, then you're not gonna be able to track stand. So this is a big part of that. The other thing it's gonna do for you, you're gonna be able to create more room and reset when you're riding in technical sections. You're gonna make more room for yourself because you can kind of back up and then go at something again. I think the most important part here though is that when you think about somebody rolling backwards, if you've seen a BMX video, sometimes they go for like a full city block rolling backwards and all that stuff. And that's not really what we're gonna focus on today. You only really need one or two backwards pedal strokes to make this whole thing work, and we're gonna start there. When you see someone rolling backwards or riding fakie, you see them a lot of times backpedaling, and the reason for that is very mechanical. If you're not pedaling backwards, your rear hub is actually going to engage, the wheel's gonna catch and move you forward. So what we have to think about doing is backpedaling enough to make sure that this back wheel doesn't grab and start pushing you forward. You don't have to backpedal like crazy, you just have to stay in front of this movement as the bike is rolling backwards so that it doesn't catch and send you forward. One way I like to talk about this or think about this, if you've ever driven a stick shift, a car with a clutch, backpedaling is the same exact thing as pushing in the clutch. You're doing this so that the gears don't engage. Now that we've talked through the mechanics of how the bike actually rolls backwards, we need to figure out how to create the momentum to get the bike to roll backwards while you're on it. So I wanna talk through two different ways to do exactly that. Each one can be used in different scenarios and it's great to be able to do both of them. They're not too different either. So let me just get started on it. This is the easiest way to learn this process. And if you have a big flat area like I have here, you can just roll up onto your front wheel and as soon as that back wheel hits, see how many backwards revolutions you can do with your pedal. A little bit more complicated, but a little bit more useful way to learn this is actually just using your body weight to move from the front of the bike to the back of the bike in a kind of forceful motion. And this is where it really comes in handy for the track stand. So a lot of times I'll put my front wheel into something and I'll have my weight over the front of the bike. I'll have my front brake locked even in some cases. And then I have this exaggerated motion where I'm moving from the front to the back of the bike while I let go of the front brake and I back pedal. And I'm able to get a couple back pedals from there as well. So start with the fakie version of this movement and then move into putting your front wheel in something and then pulling back away from it as hard as you can. Both of these methods should get you at least one to two backwards revolutions on the pedal and that's really all you need to be able to start this process. That second exercise of using your body weight to help pull the bike backwards is so useful especially when it comes to doing track stands. In fact, that's exactly how you do a track stand. If you know somebody who's struggling to learn track stands, send them this video because if you can do this thing, you will be able to pick up track stands so fast. Remember that the whole process of moving from the front of the bike to the back of the bike is what's creating that momentum. And in some cases, you can even push away from the bars because you wanna go from the front to the back of the bike as quickly and as forcefully as possible to start the momentum of the bike moving backwards. That first bit of going from a dead stop to actually moving in a direction is really key. And if since you can't pedal to make the bike move that direction, you have to create that speed that momentum, that force with your body. So you can think about pushing away from the bars and really just getting that momentum moving in that direction. One tip here, remember why you're doing this. We don't need to be able to backpedal for an entire city block, although that's great if you can. The goal here is just to get the bike moving backwards and to build your confidence, getting one or two pedal strokes backwards so that you can track stand, so that you can create more space, so that you can get comfortable moving in the opposite direction than you usually do on your bike. Don't worry if you can't get four or five, six back pedals and you're having trouble steering the bike and stuff like that. It's not really what we're doing here. We're just getting the bike moving backwards and that's what's most important. Just unlocking this and getting you started is why we're here. 
A couple additional pieces of advice here. If you wanna have the maximum amount of control while you're doing this, make sure you stay on the back of the bike as you're rolling backwards. If you move back toward the front of the bike while you're rolling backwards, it's gonna be a lot twitchier when you're trying to steer the bike and move backwards. You wanna stay in the back part of the bike while you're riding backward. Next, and you won't have to worry about this until you get into maybe three or four pedal strokes backwards, but the front wheel actually helps steer the bike and it steers opposite. It's kind of like backing up a trailer. If you want the bike to go this way, you steer the front wheel that way and vice versa. So think about that. You're not gonna have to worry about it right away, but as you start progressing and getting further back, you're gonna have a little bit more control and you're gonna be able to steer the bike in different direction. Continuing on that point, once you're able to start steering in those different directions, you're gonna to wanna to learn how to pivot out of that movement. So there's a move called the half cab where you're gonna turn the bike just a little bit and then you're actually gonna look over your shoulder and turn it to go the opposite direction. That definitely takes some practice, but that's kind of the next step. If for example, you're gonna move backward and then completely direction change. The other thing and the easier thing to do in this scenario is to just do a rear wheel pivot. And I have a full video about how to do a rear wheel pivot on this channel. I'll link that below because that's a great next step for you to learn. If you're struggling learning this on flat ground, I would also suggest maybe find a really mellow downhill to practice it on. Instead of having to worry 100% about your momentum, it may be easier to learn it on that slight downhill where gravity is gonna assist you as you learn it. Depending how confident you're feeling, there's two places you can go after this. You can take that rolling backwards motion and apply it to a track stand, which you can learn about right here, or you can pivot completely out of the movement, which you can learn right here.